I want to welcome on my first guest here for my section of uh, hosting this 24-hour maths magic show. Or, I'm sorry, I'm taking this over. This 24-hour math magic show. So, Gord, Gord, welcome to the 24-hour math magic show. Hello, Sam. Hello, and uh, I, I really want to welcome you to this very special part where we are now doing the official North American takeover of yes. the 24 Raj hour. Raj was here before. Raj was here no, before. That's true. But now it's the two of us. Exactly. Like we are entirely North American. And I'm specifically saying North America because you are uh, in the neighbor to my north, the uh, yeah. great country of Canada. Yeah. Uh, and uh, also, uh, very excitingly, you are a board game maker. Could you tell me a little bit about the board games that you make? Yeah, so my, my big board game is Santorini. And next week comes out the sequel of Santorini, Santorini, New York. Oh, that's... So this is an exciting week coming up for me. Oh, that is, that is excellent. Could you uh, tell us a little bit about Santorini? So Santorini is mostly a pure strategy game. Um, it was kickstarted uh, three years ago and did really well. So now it uh, got into Walmart and Target in the US. And I, I think the latest statistic, which kind of just made me happy was that 5,000 copies went into South Korea. So that's that was Santorini. That is, that is absolutely wonderful. And also I see here that you are the director of Math Pickle. What, what is Math Pickle? Oh, I just designed puzzles. Uh, um, I'm fully funded by the Julia Robinson Mathematics Festival. And so it's a, it's a real joy of work to be able to design puzzles for five days of the week. And then on the weekends, I get to dabble in board game design. Oh, that is, that is ex absolutely excellent. Uh, and the next time that I am around one of the Julia Robinson Mathematics uh, Festival uh, uh, locations, at, it's perhaps a conference or, or any of the festivals that they do do, uh, which I'm sure will happen uh, again eventually, uh, I will make sure to look out uh, for, for some of your work. Now we do do uh, weekly zooms as well, um, so we're, we're not uh, we're not relaxing. We're we're going full force right now. Oh, that is festival. oh, that is great to hear. And of course, most importantly, though, it is uh, a twenty four hour math magic fest. So, do you have some math magic for me? Yeah, I do. So I'm going to share my screen, and uh, here we go. Oh, wait a second. Before I share it, um, I should show you that. Um, so I, I have these cards. Um, these are from a game called Mandala, um, but I just thought they were more beautiful cards than the average um, set. Um, and I have them in four colors. Okay. Okay. So we have green, yellow, red, and purple. And I'm going to get you to choose your favorite one of those four colors. I'm going to share my screen. There we go. Share. OK, so um, the left and the right. Uh, Sam, that's just to make sure I don't forget which is left and right. I, I can okay. imagine that the audience is going to be OK. But um, I can, like you, you probably need to, um, you, you don't need to be reminded. But for me, it, because I'm working at the side here, that's for me. OK, so the way this works is that you get to choose. So again, just to show you the, the deck there, um, you get to choose uh, where you want to start. And then you're going to be making knight's moves with this. And I need to know your favorite color before again. I, I will say purple. Right. And my favorite is red, just so you know. Um, uh, so go ahead. Where would you like to start? Uh, let's start at four. Four. Got it. OK. And keep on going. Uh, you can use a knight's move. So you've got six or 11 that you can go to now. Uh, I'll take 11. Okay. Now you have to make your way all around this grid. So you'll have to think, think in advance. Where do you want to go now? OK, five. Five, yeah, you can do that. Uh, 14. 14, yeah. OK. I'm trying. I'm trying to remember my uh, knights knights moves correctly here. Seven. If it doesn't work. Like I'm making this trick up as I go. Here. Oh, okay. Um, so if it doesn't work, we're gonna we're gonna improvise. Okay. Seven. Uh, one. One. Yeah. Which I 
think puts uh no uh 10 yeah, yeah. uh then 16 right okay now i've i've no, sort of so I'll, I'll 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 let you go to anything neighboring 16 as well so you can go to 12 or 16. okay i will go to 12 then so you can try to do a nice with as much as you can okay six uh, 15, yeah. nine, yeah. Uh, I guess I will take that 13 then. <laughs> sure. Or you can go to the two. I don't, I don't like you can get the two if you want to. Oh, oh, I can. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm nice, messing nice. up. Yeah. Uh, I will take the two then, of course. Right. Uh, and the eight. Right. And we'll just get those other two. And. There, there you've got it. So um, your favorite was the purple. So we're not gonna look for the purples wherever they are. Um, I'm just gonna look for them now. I'm not gonna shuffle up the order. I'm just going to look for your purples. There's one of them. Yeah, it's not, this isn't a great magic trick as you can see. It's just kind of like very manually intensive. Uh, I'm don't don't worry. I'm completely incapable of any form of magic tricks, as far as I know. So this is still going to be quite exciting for me. Well, this is definitely exciting for me because uh, um, we've got one more purple to find. Here. And yeah, we're failing to find it. And maybe that's a magic trick that that there aren't the number of purples that I've said. Maybe okay. There we go. Good. So there we go. Now, uh, you get to fold up this. I'm going to turn these purples into reds. Um, you get, can get to fold up this in any way that you want. So you can go, for example, from the left, from the right, from the bottom, from the top. So you can just tell me which, uh, how you oh, want to fold it. I will go from the left. From the left, OK. So there we go. Keep on going. OK, uh, I will go from the bottom then. From the bottom. Keep on going. Uh, from the bottom again. Yeah. The only reason I put on these numbers underneath was I thought, oh, um, you might want to do this again. <laughs> <Obviously>, <laughs> yeah, you can see the improvisational point of this. Go ahead. Yes, uh, from the right. From the right. There we go. Okay. And then uh, from the top. And uh, for my final one, I guess I'll go from the right again. Now, you said that uh, your favorite was purple. And yeah, your purples are in there, but there's some cards that are upside down. I think those are going to be my favorite cards. Red, 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 and red. So I turned your purple <laughs> favorites into my red favorites. So that's... That's my little magic trick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> when was the last time I did a magic trick? I don't remember. I like. I think uh, probably in the nineteen nineties. <laughs> <laughs> but so that's my improvised magic trick. That is yeah. that is uh, quite quite <laughs> quite stumping to me uh, and. And uh, we'll we'll let we'll let the the people in the audience uh, yeah, you know yeah. take take a little bit little bit to think about it. Uh, are you going to be explaining it? Uh, I can explain it. I can I can redo it. I can redo it without these numbers here. Like you can remember where those numbers are. And why don't I just clean those off? So I'm just going to take those, move them off, and uh, we can do it again. We can do whatever the guests. The, the, the audience wants. Let's leave it up to the audience. You guys choose. Do you want me to just explain it? Do you want me to do it again? What what would you like me to do? Hey, well, uh, while while we wait for them to chime in, because there is there is yeah. a you know tad bit of, of uh, a delay here. So uh, how how about how about I ask you um, what what was sort what is your uh, first like your earliest mathematical memory? Um, 
I can tell you my my earliest bad mathematical memory, and that is that I was failing mathematics in grade five. I had moved from Belfast, Northern Ireland to Calgary, Canada. I was put in a school here. And um, by grade five, my math ability, which was pretty good, like I thought it was pretty good in grade two, but by grade five, I couldn't even do long division. And I was put in a slow learners group and I hated school and it was, and then I would go home after school and I would build three dimensional marble mazes <laughs> and I would go back to school. I would be, I would hate it. And so that was, that's my first bad experience of school. Well, I mean, that, that does sound quite bad. So, so what turned it around for you? Um, so I, I just went to a new school um, and uh, that, that school for, just had more structure. I was used to more structure in Northern Ireland um, and coming to Canada, I was in a, an exploratory school where I was given loads of flexibility and I just dreamed all day um, until I, yeah, I just was not functioning. <laughs> okay, so uh, so some, some things have, have come in in the chat uh, and the yep. sort of consensus is definitely do it again and maybe okay. Okay. while you're doing it, a little bit yep. of the explanation. Okay, so let's do it. Right. There we go. So uh, here we can check out my cards. And we're just going to start um, wherever. And you guys can choose uh, where to go from here. So um, we're going to go night smooth. Now, now you don't have the numbers. So I'm just going to say, I'm just going to make it up myself. Anything goes here. Um, you can't fail with uh, doing nice moves, and you can't fail by doing um, single moves like, like this that I'm doing here. What you can fail at is if you try to go diagonal. That will make you fail. Because I have not shuffled this deck. I maybe uh, should tell you that that is where some of the trick comes from is that this deck is not shuffled. Okay, there we go. And what we have here is if I turn over all of, uh, do, if you guys want to guess here, um, guess, I'm just going to wait for 10 seconds, what you think is going to happen, how I organized that deck before I started this problem. How did I organize it? Okay, so I'm going to ask Again, what is your second favorite color? Uh, what's your second favorite, favorite color, Sam? Um, um, yellow. Yellow. Okay. So I'm going to look here. I'm going to say my favorite color is green this time. And I'm going to try to turn yellow into green. So here is a yellow. And you guys can probably guess that the only ones I need to look at are these ones. See some kind of pattern there? Okay. So those are the only ones I need to look at. I know these ones, in my head, I know that these ones are purple and they are red. So I can turn over any one of these, see purples and reds. Okay. But I'm not turning over those ones. I'm just showing you guys. If I was to turn over everything on this checker backboard, it's going to be yellows and greens on one side, and reds and purples on the other. So if you say that your favorite is yellow, I say green. Now, um, if it is, uh, now if I'm turning over only the yellows, because Sam said that his favorite color was yellow, and I want you to imagine as I'm folding up here, as no matter where I'm going to be folding, which um, this card here, if I'm going to end up with all of the cards that say here, is this card going to be face up or face down? So think for five seconds on chat. And no matter how I do, uh, what order I do the flipping, the last flip or one of the last flips is going to be turning this one and it will be face up on here. But this is the last place that it ends up. You can choose where it ends up last. It doesn't have to be this spot, but this spot is as good as any. So I'm going to randomly choose this spot. So this yellow is going to be face down. This yellow is going to be face down. This yellow 
well, we can count. It's going to be just a parity argument here. So this is going to be one, two, three steps, flips. It doesn't matter how we flip this. It's going to take three flips of this to get over to this spot. Is it going to be face up or face down? Think for five seconds. It's going to be face down. So all of the yellows that you see are going to be face down. All of um, my greens, they're in this position, this position, here. Oh no, they're, yeah, they're in, yeah, they're in this position, this position, uh, and these two positions. All of those are going to be face up. So we can try it in any order that we want. Let's see these cards up. Do that again from this side for no reason. Okay, this way. And this way, and this way, and this way. Okay. So, which ones are face up uh, here? The ones are going to be greens. So there's two conclusion. There's two ways that this can end. It can end with everything face up except the greens, which is what happened last time. Or this time, it ends up with just the greens face up. That's the that's a little trick, um, and I'm going to stop screen sharing. There. Yeah, and and so it, it comes down to uh, to it being very important that you that you have that deck structured yeah, in the right way. I actually have uh, four decks here set set out. So at the start, I was just going like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then I switched decks, of course, when I went over. <laughs> so I'm not sure. Maybe legitimate magicians would just say that that was sacrilege. Like I, I've just, but I've got these decks all lined up. So if you needed me to do it a three times, I was all prepared to uh, cheat I, on you guys many times. I, I knew I should have had you do it four times. Like that, <laughs> that would have been the trick right there. Four yeah, times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good. So that's... Um, I do have a treat to show you guys. I've got many treats. Um, so uh, Sam, I know you're into graph theory in a big way. So one thing that I could show would be the graceful tree conjecture, which I consider, um, like I want to get up, this is the number one thing I want to do in Math Pickle is I want to get a million dollar reward for the graceful tree conjecture because it's the best way to teach subtraction to, to kids. It's just so cool. So that would be one direction. Another direction would be just a really cool looking um, um, uh, puzzle that the, that the audience will have to guess where, where, what are the rules for this? So those, let, let's just leave it there. Those are the two options. Um, I guess whenever we're waiting because people are 30 seconds behind, I'm just gonna make a decision and show that one. So here we go. There. Now it could be that by the time that uh, everyone else catches up with me, they're, they're going to say, no, we don't want this. <laughs> and that's one of the glorious things about a 30 second delay is that I get to make decisions um, pretending like I'm, I'm including you in the decisions. Okay. So yeah, you have to, what am I trying to do here? And uh, was I successful? So that's the question. So this is a, a puzzle that I give to my grade four kids. Um, what is it? What, what was I trying to do? You don't have to read the text. The text is uh, not important. I, I do, I do want to shout out just one of the most beautiful possible stamps that you have up in the uh, right-hand corner, though. That is. Yeah, yeah. I, I love beauty in mathematics. It needs to be physically beautiful as well as the mathematics need to be beautiful. There's so many kids who get turned off of mathematics just because of crappy photocopying. You can create real beauty. Of course, you know it. I'm talking to the converted here. But you can create real beauty in mathematics. And we need to be doing that for uh, kids in class. OK, so I'm waiting for people out there in the audience to you can post in chat. This isn't a magic trick. You can post in chat what you think I was trying to do here and if I was successful. 
if I was in a grade four classroom, the kids would be coming up with hypotheses. I think you're trying to do this. I, I'm making an observation that all the reds, for example, are clumped together. So that's the kind of um, thing that I'm looking for. It's so um, while while we wait while we wait for some of those some of those to uh, come in, uh, you mentioned you mentioned these classes, and we uh, had someone in the chat mention that they had a kid who who really enjoys your your daily math classes as well. Uh, so yeah. uh, could you tell us a little bit more about those? So that is Puzzle Time with Math Pickle, and you can register for those on um, mathpickle.com. So I every that that is noon Calgary time which uh, that's uh, mountain time. So 2 p.m. Eastern in the United States. And um, that would be in England uh, and the United Kingdom. What is that? That's uh, six hours difference. So that's like uh, 6 p.m. Is that correct? Uh, in a week from now, that will be correct. Uh, they have preemptively um, uh, fallen an hour behind because they right. do their daylight. That's right. It's, and... I, I, I remember that. So yeah. <laughs> crazy what like yeah when when i when i signed why up didn't we said yeah get, when i signed up for organized? this for this shift uh it was actually an hour earlier uh and now i have to stay up an hour later than i than i meant to <laughs> uh so so we have um we have some things uh here uh we have uh the reds all add up to 100 is yeah, is, yeah that's, uh, that's absolutely true and who who said that uh that was Het Nickick? Uh sorry, I mean it it's it's YouTube, so uh Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Het <laughs> uh I'm I'm very sorry for mispronouncing uh your name. It is probably something uh Oh, it's so yeah. fun to mispronounce names. Like Het Nickick, you've got to say that's a great name to mispronounce. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, uh, we have someone that's, else who says funny. uh orange adds up to sixty-four. Each color adds up to yeah. a square. Ah, there, there's an interesting hypothesis. Uh, someone is else uh, is talking about how to solve trigonometry. Um, and someone else is suggesting not not switching from daylight savings, which is uh, it's something I will uh, also uh, jump on board with, but I don't think it has to do with this. Yeah. So uh, I, I really like the comment about 100. I like the comment about 64. And I like the comment about all of them actually add up to squares. And that was indeed what I was trying to do here. That is true. That is what I was trying to do. And was I successful? Sadly, I was gloriously unsuccessful. As you can see, 21 and 22 do not add up to a square. So this is an example of my failing um, at mathematics. But I love to celebrate failure. And why not publish it? And why not scream it out to everyone in multiple continents that oh. I failed doing this? And there, there it is. You are you are one hundred percent speaking my language. There, uh, I have been, I've been on the, uh, I've been on the path of of trying to uh, get us to celebrate failure, failure a lot more, uh, just in our daily lives, but also within mathematics. Uh, as I, uh, as I like to tell, so uh, these days I'm a mathematics librarian as well as a podcaster. And so when I go in and I talk to uh, uh, talk to mathematicians from time to time, when I when I talk uh, talk to them about the things that they can get from the University of Michigan Library where I work, uh, I uh, also almost always try to put in something like, oh, and also don't don't worry that that you might fail. Like that's what math is. Math is a series of failures until you finally succeed, uh, and that's. That's really that I think I think that's the way to think about it. Yeah, I, I think if if uh, like I, I tell kindergarten kids uh, you failed, um, okay, and I do it with a joke, but yeah, they failed, and how are we going to deal with this? <laughs> okay, much better that we do that in kindergarten rather than having kids accelerate from class to class to class, gifted kids having them s just flying through school, and then they hit university and <laughs> splat. It's that's not a fun splat to see. So oh. failure needs to be built into um, early childhood education. Oh, definitely. And successes. I... Oh, like yeah. Successes too. Like both. We want to have, um, like I don't have kids raising their hands in class because if you have a slower kid, a methodical problem solver, and they are working on a problem and all around them, the kid said, I know, I know, I know. I've got the answer. I've got the answer. That's already a failure in that child's mind. So 
you have to give everyone a success, especially those slow, methodical problem solvers. And those kids are just are struggling. As uh, Slug Biker uh, pointed out in the chat, uh, then you get to prick and, uh, pick a new project to fail at once you've uh, when you have the next thing, which is, I, I think, a, a great place to uh, to sign off here because we are at the end of our half an hour. So, Gord, thank you so much for coming on to the 24-hour math, or sorry, 24-hour math magic show. That was a lot of fun, Sam. Thanks a lot. Take care, everyone.